Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Tomas and you're watching Casual DIY. In today's episode we'll be exploring how to get the best result using epoxy resin. So the air bubbles, if there are issue in your projects, I'll show you how you can get rid of them in a nice easy way without using the pressure pot. But stay tuned and check it out. Well then guys, so let's jump into this. It's a quite interesting topic and to be fair, it's quite difficult to achieve good results with epoxy with no air bubbles in it. So the first step, what you need to look at is actually to choose the right epoxy for your needs. Um, and I've done this mistake because this is the third epoxy I had and it actually worked for what I needed to do. Not all epoxies are the same and it's very easy to uh, make a mistake when choosing one. So I'm using mine to cast things like piece of jewellery or anything like that. And this epoxy is <laughs> it seems to be working really well. It's the amazing clear cast. I will leave a link to this down below in the description if you want to check it out. So my epoxy comes in two parts, A and B. Uh, where B is the hardener and I've got about 40 minutes of work time before it actually starts to settle down and harden uh, to a stage where you won't be able to do anything with it. It needs about 24 to 48 hours to fully cure and um, so it's a fairly long um, process but I found it's actually giving me the best results for what I needed to do. The next thing when you really need to remember when um, using epoxy is to mix it in the correct amounts. So my epoxy is one to one ratio. So obviously the one you've got, you need to check on your on your packaging what ratios um, you need to use. And you have to be really specific and really accurate with it uh, to make sure um, your project will actually cure correctly and harden enough um, for, for what you need. So in this video, I want to actually show you the the differences uh, between how you mixing epoxy and what results you're gonna get so we're gonna have four trials and the fourth one is my ultimate one that I actually use all the time now but also if you've got any other tips um, on how to improve the quality of finish please let me know down in the comments because I'm only a starter I've only done a few projects with epoxy and at the minute I found my best way which doesn't mean it is the best way. So if you've got any other suggestions, uh, drop me that comment down below because I'm quite interested and I absolutely love these projects. So it would be really cool to, you know, see what uh, you actually do uh, with your epoxy projects. But let's head into the mixing of the epoxy and let's check out the results. Right then, so trial a, as you can see, I've marked all the containers with uh, letters A, B, uh, C and D so we can easily um, check out which one is which. So the first thing we need to do, turn on the scales, um, zero it and we're going to be pouring the component A. Now we'll add component B, which is the hardener. And let's give it a mix. And that is done. Basic mixing. That's it for the trial A. So the difference in trial B is that the part A, which is not the hardener, um, will put in some warm water before mixing with part B. Um, what that will do, it will change the viscosity of part A. will actually make sure that the mixing uh, of part A and B will be a lot easier and the air bubbles will be able to get out more easily. So do not use boiling water for this step. It only needs to be a really hot tap water. It will do the job just fine. We'll need to leave this for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we'll take out the uh, container with part A, place it back on scales, and we're gonna add component B. And we'll gently mix it. You will notice that the mixing is a lot smoother and easier. 
and there's a lot less air bubbles. Mix it really slow uh, so you don't introduce any air bubbles um, to the mixture. Trial C and D are actually very similar to each other. Uh, the only difference will be at the end of, um, of mixing everything. It's, <laughs> it's a quite an interesting and unique tip I'm going to give you. So we're going to do both at the same time. And I'll show you the difference on D uh, in a second. So the process is very similar to what we had in test B. So basically we put our scales on. We add component A and then we'll put it into warm water for around 10 minutes. And now it's time to add part B to the mix. We'll take it out of the water, wipe it a bit. Turn on the scales. And now it's time to mix it. Again, going quite slowly. But you don't need to uh, put too much effort because uh, because we heated up part A, it mixes really well. And now it's time for the next step. So with part C, uh, we'll remove the popsicle or your steering stick. We'll put that back to the warm water. And part D, we'll leave the um, steerer, your stick, your popsicle stick or whatever you're using inside of the mixture and we'll put it back to the hot water. We'll leave that for about 10 to 15 minutes. So what this actually does, it's making the epoxy um, thinner, which allows the air bubbles to come to the top. And <laughs> later on you'll see why I left the popsicle, the stirrer, in the container. And as you can see, the effects are quite good. In component C, basically nearly all the bubbles disappeared. And after 10 minutes, it's time to take them out. Um, the job is done for component C, it will stay as is. Whereas component D needs another bonus step. So we'll take it out of the water. And what happens, even the micro bubbles will actually attach to the popsicle and when you take it out, uh, there's even less of them inside of the epoxy. But whatever's left on the top, we're just going to use some heat, it could be a um, blowtorch, or as you can see this is just a normal um, kitchen flame. By using the popsicle all the air bubbles came to the top and most of them were um, when you take the popsicle out actually come with the piece of wood or whatever you're using but there's still some left really really tiny ones at the top hence I'm going to use some heat to remove them. Obviously not too much because the cup is plastic, we just need to pop them right at the top. And that's it. Right, so all four tests are now done and before then harden, I just want to quickly show you what are the results at this stage. Test A. As you can see, there's quite a lot of air bubbles inside, outside, on the top. So uh, it's a fairly poor uh, result there. Test B. It's actually far better, but there's still um, quite a few really tiny air bubbles inside. Not sure if you can see it correctly. Test C. Far better finish. There's no large air bubbles at all, but there's a few really tiny 
um, air bubbles inside. Uh, on your finished product it will be very difficult to see but if you really have a close uh, look at them you will be able to see them. And the test D it's almost clear basically you've got few really tiny air bubbles inside and on the top there's nothing on the sides there's nothing so the popsicle actually helped to drag them air bubbles out and the results are really really good we'll come back to these after when they actually settle down so basically i'm going to leave them for 24 hours in room temperature uh, remember when when using um, epoxy um, you know the temperature is too low uh, it will not cure correctly will take a lot longer but the temperature is too hot is not good either so make sure it's in the room temperature about 20 degrees that's the optimal um, temperature for the epoxy to actually settle down in a moderate good time um, so I'll leave it for 24 hours and uh, we'll see the final results but right then guys, so it was 24 hours since we poured the epoxy in and now it's finally cured. I've took them out of the plastic containers and the findings are as follows. So test A, as you can see it's not even uh, transparent. There's so many air bubbles inside that it's actually um, it's quite milky. So uh, that's definitely a failure unless you're trying to actually get the result like this. Next one is test B. As you can see it's far, far better. Uh, you can still actually see some air bubbles inside uh, but it's definitely, uh, we're going for the clear effect here. So it's definitely a lot better. So that's just heating part A of your epoxy and that's it. Now test C, it's far far better. Uh, you can actually just see really really tiny air bubbles, not sure if I will be able to actually catch it. Well really tiny air bubbles inside, like micro um, air bubbles inside, but um, uh, definitely a far better finish and um, clear transparent result. And by far the best results we can get on test D. The, the micro bubbles, they are so sporadic, you can hardly actually see them. Um, so the results are very, very, very good. I'm not sure if you're actually going to be able to, uh, to see them. It was very difficult to actually get, get these out of the plastic containers, hence, as you can see, the edges are quite uh, rigid but um, I hope you can see the results and how clear that uh, that actually came out. So as you can see, it's a fairly easy way to achieve a really good epoxy uh, with no air bubbles in your castings. Um, you're not actually not spending any extra money, it's just the process and the technique how you use it. But although um, the um, test D came out really, really good, you will still be able to see some really tiny air bubbles inside. Obviously the results you will be getting uh, will all depend on many other factors like what epoxy you're using, was the humidity, was the temperature outside um, and everything else. But this is the technique that you can use to achieve a fairly decent result. Um, again, probably the top airless um, finish you will achieve it's only in the pressure pot or the vacuum pot but obviously they're quite expensive you're probably looking at about 300 British pounds to get something decent so that's my way I found at this moment in time that I will be using uh, going forward uh, obviously I'm still learning and I may change this process if I do obviously I'll make another video and let you know if you've got a, um, a better way of actually doing this um, casting your epoxy with no air bubbles please let me know down in the comments because um, that would be absolutely awesome to find something even better than this and then hopefully <laughs> inexpensive as well but for now guys this is all I've got for you tonight uh, if you enjoyed this video please leave me that thumbs button down below and I hope to see you next week on my next woodworking adventure. Till then, take care.